Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee in the Corral. I'm Abigail Hobbs, and I have Zelenka Breeze here with me today. We are actually, actually, I'm sorry, let me tell you the truth. Coffee in the arena today. I have my delicious coffee mm, with my uh, vanilla extract from Mexico. Yes! And my amazing Kentucky Mountain Horse Zell with me, who is our podcast mascot. Anyways, we are here in the arena today because uh, originally I planned to do some more training with Zell, but this morning I realized when I brought her in from the pasture, her left eye was really swollen. It was almost swollen closed. Um, so I decided it was not a good day for that type of training. Um, it's not really uncommon for horses to get a swollen eye necessarily. Shiloh used to kind of get them often. I think she would, um, especially as she got older, I think she would bump her, um, they can bump their eye on things. I think probably in Zell's situation, she probably poked it with a stick going under a tree. You know, they can poke at branches. They're out at nighttime, so they're out in the dark. We actually don't have a lot of trees on our property at all. But, I mean, if there's something to run into or bump into or get poked by, it's going to be Zell. She's, <laughs> she's a little clumsy, okay? But we love her so much. Yes, we do. Hmm. So today we're going to change it up a little bit. I have my grooming equipment out here and we're going to give Zella grooming. I thought what would be something that Zell would really still enjoy and get to spend some time with her today. So Zell, she's tied up here. Come here. If you're watching the video, you get to, you get to watch a little grooming session today. It's not super exciting, but it's amazing if you've never groomed a horse i encourage everybody to find a way to experience grooming a horse it can be so grounding and comforting so i'm just going to talk you through a little grooming session here today for funsies and uh Zell could really use some good itching the horses are shedding their winter coat so she's very very itchy and she has lots of hair and that's one thing that grooming is amazing for um it helps to circulate their blood flow. It cleans them, of course. It helps them to get rid of the hair that they're trying to shed. You can also, it helps, it helps you find like, um, you know, when your wounds and things that you may not have noticed on your horse, because as you're grooming, you're kind of thoroughly going every, over every part of their body. Um, and horses, they are, there's a lot to a horse. They have four legs. Um, and there's a lot of times that I haven't noticed a wound or I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't grooming my horse. Um, cause they can hide them pretty well. They have hair. So even if they get cuts and scrapes, unless it's like profusely bleeding, I cannot notice them for a couple days, which is not really good. So, um, I used to groom Shiloh every day. That's back when I was 16, 17, 18. Um, and I tell everybody, if you have time to groom your horse every day, you absolutely should. Um, having three horses now and three kids and two partners, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have as much time as I used to, but, um, yeah, I still try to get to grooming them at least once a week if I can. And then I, ch I I'm in the habit of checking them over, um, when I bring them in from the pasture and stuff like that before they go out. So even if I don't get to grooming them, I can check over their legs and over their body and, you know, make sure that I'm not missing some important health factor, um, you know, possible health risk. So what I'm using right now is called a curry comb. It is the rubber um, tool. It's made out of rubber usually, and it's got these little jagged edges that go around. And you're supposed to brush your horse in circular motions and put a lot of uh, feel to it. Put some elbow grease into it. This is what's gonna draw the dirt and debris out of the horse's coat. And as you can see, I'm banging it. I'm doing a little bit of time and then I'm banging it off because it just fills up with hair. So this is also a very rewarding experience. I'm gonna come over here to the camera just so you guys can see this, okay? You just do a couple brushes and look at all that hair. Crazy, huh? So this has to feel just amazing, right? 
And it's the horse literally, it's like getting a massage. So you'll see Zell. I don't know if you can see her face. She's moving her head and she's uh, dipping her nose down and kind of twitching the end of her muzzle. It's her way of saying, oh, that feels good. Right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. Kind of like how a dog will, you know, shake their leg. Horses will usually tip their nose around and um, they'll imitate scratching you back because that's what they do. That's our natural instinct. So it's really cool. Horses groom each other. Um, you'll see this in the wild, but you'll also see this in domesticated horses too that are friends. They will go and scratch each other's, they'll itch each other at the same time. So it's their instinct. If you get a really itchy spot on them, something that feels really good, they'll reach around and try to itch you back, literally. And um, I have to, it's, it's, it's always hard for me to say no and not allow them to itch on me while I'm doing it because I know they're just really, really want to like, here, let me itch your back while you're itching mine. But the problem is they itch with their teeth and they can be pretty aggressive about it sometimes. To another horse, it feels really good. It feels like a, just a really deep massage. But um, to a human's body, <laughs> you could get a little bite. You know, they, they're they not like taking chunks out of you or anything, but it's, yeah, you could get hurt. So just to be safe, I just, I allowed the horses to kind of, they'll tip their nose and say, oh, that feels real good, but I won't let them itch back on me because I'm not as tough as a horse. Anyways, it's really, really cool. It's neat to be able to, I love this. I love to find ways to give back to my horses. My horses give me so much. I feel like all horses give humans so much and they can so easily be taken for granted. Look at all this hair that's just pouring off of her leg back here as I'm grooming. If you're watching a video, you can just see massive amounts of hair just coming off her leg, which doesn't even look at it. It has that much hair. Um, or that much winter hair, but it does. Anyways, I love to find ways to give back to my horses. And this is something that can feel really good to them. Now, I also will say that you can groom a horse and be completely unaware and in another zone and be have your mind on a million other things and just going through the motions. It's kind of like driving a car and then you don't remember how you got there. I am definitely guilty of grooming a horse and not being present and mindful as I groom them. So um, I think during those times, the horses don't benefit as much because you're not really connected to them as you groom. So I try to work on myself and focus, connect to them, pay attention to what I'm doing, keep my mind in the present moment, and just be noticing. Like right now, I'm noticing on her back leg, she has this... Um, I wasn't sure if this was a fungus where this hair was coming off because you can usually if you have like scabby spots all in a row or all in an area, um, it's a sign of like a fungus underneath. But this is an old cut that she has here that's still healing and then just hairs coming off around it. But a good idea also is as I groom, if I find areas that might feel a little scabby or something, I'll feel it with my hand because I can feel I'm, I'm experienced enough of horse <laughs> skin issues that I can feel if it's going to be a fungus of some kind. So her back leg feels good. That's just an old scar that she has there still healing. So we got this right side of her done. She must be feeling so good. She's looking around. She's real happy. So pretty this morning. The sun is shining. There's hardly any wind, uh, which yesterday we had over 20 mile an hour winds. So that was crazy. But today is just beautiful. So Zell's enjoying her oh look at her now she's really getting into this side if you're watching the video she's kind of like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah she loves her neck and her chest and her withers right here in front where the saddle sits right here this is the called the withers on the horse and that's usually where they itch each other right up on the withers one horse will stretch his head around they'll be itching like this and the other horse will bring their neck around and itch the other horse's withers so they can both itch each other in those feel good spots at the same time Look at Zell. She puts her head way up because she's like, that feels so good. She's moving back and forth on the fence because she loves it so much. So this is a beautiful way to give back to your horse, check up on your horse, and keep your horse healthy. So grooming down the legs here. Again, we're checking for any wounds, any funguses, any abnormalities. So far so good besides her poor eye, which I did bring eye drops out. So don't let me forget, put some eye drops in Zell's eye. 
Boy, she's losing hair. Yeah, that seems to be what works the best. Usually, um, horses are really good at healing. They, I mean, they don't eat junk food, really, and your body should be able to heal from the inside out for the most part. I think we really jeopardize our immune systems when we eat junk food, and then we expect, you know, we get frustrated when we don't feel healthy, but um, it really matters what you put in your body. And with horses, they don't really have the option to put a bunch of junk food in there. So um, I just, they, they heal on their own pretty darn well, actually. And I think that's how everyone's designed to heal. But as far as the eye thing goes, um, I usually just put some eye drops in it to help with the irritation because her eyes red and swollen and it's irritated. So um, I've just found all I usually need to do is put some eye drops in it once or twice. And then usually by the next day, that's gone. Swelling's gone back down. So if it lasts for more than two days, I would be concerned and probably call a vet. But I've seen it come and go pretty easily. So we'll see how Zell does. She's never gotten a swollen eye, so we'll see. Anyways, all right, coming to an end on this left side of her. She's so happy. Makes me happy to make my horses happy. It's like, you know, watching your kids open Christmas gifts is so much fun. It's like, yeah, it's fun to get Christmas gifts, I won't lie, but nothing beats watching your kids open Christmas gifts. It's just so much fun. Especially when you know they're just gonna love it so much, you know? Anyways, this is Zell's Christmas gift for today. All right, I'm coming down her left hind leg. I'm just always amazed with how well-designed horses are. How they, oh, we got a little spot back here. Looks like a maybe a little old sore. Oh, that's a little bit more recent. It's got a scab on it. Really small nick. She could have nicked herself with her back hoof when she was running because it's on the inside of her leg. Or it could have been a kick from another horse, but if it was a kick, that would be really, really, really minor because it's just a little cut inside. So, um, I have different salves I put on the horses depending on the severity of the wound, but I'm always amazed at how well designed horses are is what I was saying because they don't look like, just like I was saying, it doesn't look like she has a bunch of winter hair on her legs. You can see it on her body, but then when I go to groom her legs, a bunch of hair comes off. I'm like, look at that. Look how much your whole body, including your legs, grew hair to protect you over the winter time. So amazing to me. Here we go. Okay, so now we have got all of, I'm eating hair literally. This is the thing. Here's the thing about grooming a horse, especially when you are, I have hair in my mouth. Grooming them when they're losing their winter coat. Oh, baby, you want to say hi to the camera? She's facing the camera now. Come here a minute. Um, you are getting hair off the horse when you groom them, and that's really helping them out. But just be aware that you you will now be wearing all their hair. So it's a transfer of horse to human. Anyways, no, Zell, no eating. She's going to try to eat. And remember what we talked about? The rules cannot change. They have to stay the same or they will get confused and they will not feel safe. All right, I'm gonna grab some coffee. Mm. Uh-oh, Zell said, seriously, coffee in the crowd is not coffee in the crowd until I get some. There she goes, there she goes. All right, Zell's getting her coffee now. You like it, baby? It's yummy, do you like the vanilla in it? I've got her hair all over my jacket now. And I'm getting hot, so I'm gonna have to take it off soon. There was some more, a little bit more. All right, that one has your hair in it, so you gotta drink that. <laughs> All right, you. Get the hair out of my mouth. We're gonna grab the next thing, which is the body brush. The job of the body brush is to collect the hair that you have pulled up out of their skin and brush it off. It's the short bristled brush. There are different brushes. They all have different uses. So the short bristled brush, I got to get the old, gosh, these things are dirty. It's time to wash all my brushes. Springtime is the time to wash all your brushes and start fresh, but I haven't made it to that yet. So I'm just cleaning this off before I even use it. Okay, babies. So now we're going to be 
This is short hard strokes. We're going to be brushing along with the way the hair grows. Okay? So following the growth of the hair, and it changes all over the body, the way that the hair grows. So you got to watch, you know, and mostly I'm like, it's, for one, it gets the dirt off better, but for two, it would be like combing your hair backwards. It doesn't, probably doesn't feel super comfortable. So follow that hair growth, short, firm strokes. Feels good to the horses too. A lot of people, I go to give them a grooming brush and they come up and they start like, softly brushing. Look at Zelle. She's like, what the hell? Stop trying to tickle me. Horses, it's like a massage. You're not here to tickle them, right? And when they, when they massage each other, they really put, they put some uh, pressure into it. So good, firm, short strokes. Feels good to them. <sighs> there you go. It's invigorating. So we're I'm following the hair, as you can see, changes. So that's the cool thing. There's so many little details to a good grooming session. I'm cleaning this brush out in between. You'll see me stop and uh, clean the brush off. Okay, this is the flank of the horse. The hair grows like this on the flank. So it, it grows like a stalk of wheat out of nowhere. So the, the hair is coming down the back, down the rump, and then all of a sudden there's like this stalk of wheat looks like the way the hair grows out. It's very interesting. It also can be ticklish to horses. So I try to tell people, be careful when you're grooming that area because horses, some horses, not all horses, but some horses can be ticklish there, so it, but it is a sensitive area for all horses. Think of it like your underarm. Okay, underneath here, that's kind of what this is for the horses. So I just give it, I just make sure when I'm brushing here that I don't brush lightly, right? Because that would feel ticklish to her. So I just have a nice firm, but a sensitive touch. Here we go, finishing this side up here. Tell you what, grooming can be a good workout too. You really put some elbow grease in that thing. There we go, Zell. Clean the brush off, then we'll head on over to the other side. <clears throat> Sometimes I brush to clean my horses. Sometimes I just brush to connect with my horses. And when I do that, I am uh, I go a little slower usually, and I pay attention to kind of all the different movements of the horse. And I really focus more on the mental connection with the horse. So today I'm doing a little bit of both, but I'm focusing a little bit more on helping her to get off this winter hair because that's the goal of this session today, to help Zell not be so hot. It's gonna get up to 70 something degrees today. She's putting her head down. If you're watching a video, she got her head dropped real close to the ground. That's because she's taking a nap. Well, now she's thinking about the grass and Dale, but she's been dropping her head kind of low, just closing her eyes a little bit. She's sleepy. They were out all night. So this is kind of their nap time. So it's a great time to have a grooming session because she's not in the mood to go run around and do a bunch anyways. There we go. Hope you guys had a great week. Um, I had a really good week. Let me think, what happened this week? You wanna smell the hair I'm getting off? So I was checking in over here. Yeah, okay. I presented at One Million Cups this week and it went really well. Had a lot of good feedback, a lot of good questions. I made several really good connections. I'm excited to follow up with those. Um, people seem to really enjoy my presentation and connect with it. Not just enjoy it, but really connect on a personal level. Um, so I'm hoping that I am able to continue um, possibly uh, well, not continue, but like follow up with some of the connections that I make that I made from that, and um, yeah, see if I can collaborate with some people and um, find resources and all that jazz to be able to really get my organization um, going to be able to start serving people. That's what I'm really wanting to do, and I know it takes time, but. Um, let's see, so on then I was on Wednesday last week, and then on Friday, I gave a farm tour to Foster Adopt Connect, which is an awesome organization that helps foster families 
in basically every aspect known to mankind. If you look them up, fosteradoptconnect.org, I believe. They are amazing. We should see what all their services are, but they sent um, a team of four people out to come for a tour, and then one one of the team members, there's four people, and then one guy was on uh, Zoom, so it was fun. He attended virtually. So, anyways, I gave him a farm tour. I took him on our trail that we have around our first pasture that's called Trek to Connect, where we have a bunch of mindful stations throughout the trail where we talk about mindful things and ways to become healthier and um, basically connect back to ourselves. So I loved it. We, I kind of just gave them little teasers of experiences that I offer to a variety of groups depending on the needs. So I was just trying to give them little, little teasers. Um, so we did the trail. I had them play a game in here with pool noodles and balls to work on teamwork and just have fun. It was, that was a blast. And then they built an obstacle course and then each one of them led um, my pony Faye through the obstacle course. So that was fun. I'm going to pause real quick to tell you guys I'm using now the finishing brush. It has the longer bristles. So finishing, also known as the dandy brush, basically it does the end job. So this comes through, it's like the waxing your car, right? So you wash it and then you come through this and you do long strokes, long firm strokes with this and it kind of gets the excess dust off from the rigorous grooming that we just did to them. It's like the finishing touch that makes them shine. So is still dusty and dirty. I have never groomed, I mean not silly me. I have groomed her. I've never bathed her since I've gotten her. Um, she was terrified of water so I took the whole first year just to let her kind of get used to water being sprayed on her and she never got like super comfortable with it so we'll work on it more this year but um, I know once she realizes it's not going to kill her she's fine. She's usually she's that horse that's like ah, I'm gonna die. Oh that, that's fine. No big deal. When she realizes it's not going to kill her but she is also the one that acts like she's dying. So the first time I put the hose on her, she freaked out, trying to run away, ran in circles around me as if somebody was shooting her with a gun. So I've just gone really slow with it. And she got better, but we'll work on it some more this year. But I was saying all that to say that she's dusty because she's never truly had a bath, I don't think. I'm pretty sure they never bathed her. They hadn't worked with her hooves. So I'm sure if they hadn't done her hooves, they didn't bathe her. Most people don't go that extra mile, especially not a 30-day training place. <laughs> Um, so I'm looking forward to getting her bathed this year and actually really, really clean. Anyway, she's looking pretty good. But uh, yeah, so it was a great hour and a half farm tour. They loved it. They're looking forward to possibly, they, they were already coming up with how they really felt like it could be helpful to all the different people that they provide services for. So including the caretakers of the um, foster children and all that good stuff. So I'm excited about that. Really, really excited. Um, and then tomorrow I have a booth at a nonprofit job sh um, showcase and fair. Job fair and showcase. Sorry, I think I said that wrong. Anyway, so that's tomorrow. I'll have a booth, Freedom for the Taking, all day to basically tell more people about what I'm doing and working hard to get the word out. And Zell has got an itchy face. So she's itching her face on me. I'm sorry, I forgot to do your face. Believe it or not, her face is, her, even her face is shedding a lot of hair. So right now she's itching her face on my fingernails. And I feel one scab up here on her forehead. So this is probably a little ringworm spot. And I know, don't freak out. Here's the thing though. Horse ringworm cannot spread to humans. That's the nice thing. And human ringworm cannot spread to horses. However, uh, it can with cats. So one of our cats had one spot of ringworm a while back and it doesn't, we treated it and doesn't have it anymore, but we've been real careful to not spread ringworm back and forth between the cats and uh, my family since we've been dealing with the whole thing. Um, but the nice thing is you can't with horses. It's a different strain, I guess, or a different type, but I usually put some iodine on it. I'll like get the scab off and put some iodine in and then it goes away. I don't know why horses get so lucky. Look how much hair you guys is coming off her face. Oh, you hear something? Something spook you? Um, so 
So yeah, I'm excited about all the opportunities for networking. It's just that in between space of now people are getting to know about it and excited to learn about it and they want to utilize the services. But at the same time, um, I, it's, tr it's figuring out the funding part of it, you know, like, okay. So like these foster families that I'd love to serve, like, how can I get the resources and the funding to be able to serve them? Because I, so, I said serve, to be able to serve them. I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what um, accent that is, but whatever. So it's the whole thing of like grant writing and finding sponsorships and funding and fundraising. And I'm hoping I'll find some people that are going to volunteer their time to help me figure that out because that's the tricky part. And hopefully some of these organizations like Foster Care Adopt, Adopt may have some funding in place for that. So we'll see. Right now I am using the curry comb on Zell's face and she loves it. She can't get enough of it. She's like, thank you. I have been so dirty. Can you imagine not being able to really itch certain parts of yourself? I mean, oh, because you breathe in deep. You probably can't imagine. That's why they make back scratchers and such like that. But for horses, I always think about, they have all these areas. And it's pretty cool to watch. Like, Zell's really amazing. She's very flexible. She can itch her ear. She can itch her ear with her back hind foot. So she'll reach her head back and her foot up. And she'll like bend in half to itch your ear. So it's young horses are usually pretty flexible. As they get older, they don't, they're not as flexible, but I'm gonna get this excess hair off her face. And then I've got a small little face brush. I usually buy my horses small face brushes because their face is such a sensitive place. And when a horse, oh, sorry, I'm bumping into my microphone here. When a horse lets you touch its face, that's a gift, right? Face is a very personal thing. You don't walk up and just touch people's faces, right? I mean, hopefully not. So the same thing with horses. It's, it's interesting because people's first response is they want to pet the horse's face. But if you wouldn't do that to a human, right? Because that would feel weird. Always start, always be more respectful of horses and, and pet them here maybe on the shoulder. It'd be like maybe patting somebody on the back. Pet them on the shoulder for a second. Let they reach around with their face to smell you. Then I let them smell me. And then if they leave, they, you know, they pull their face away and walk off, obviously they don't want me to pet their face. Zell loves when her face is petted. She's just, she's that horse that loves the attention. She doesn't mind, she doesn't bother her at all. She doesn't mind it. Fayana is very protective of her face. I always have to ask permission. Sometimes she says yes, sometimes she says no. And it's just respecting that. But um, I try to get to a place with all my horses where they know that I'm for them, I'll protect them. I'll do my best to be very gentle and kind. And so when I do groom their faces, I have a small, very soft face brush that's actually made with horse hair. Um, and I just do it really soft and it can be very calming to the horses. In fact, when I do Skye's face, she gets so calm and she loves it. The gazelle, she's putting her head down, kind of blinking her eyes like, oh, this feels good. Thank you, mommy. Here we are. Does that feel good? That's so nice. All right, got our face done now. Okay, one more thing here on the grooming end. So we've done the body, we've done the face. We're going to pick out the hooves. Important, important, important. In fact, it's more important than grooming the horse even because that's how a horse survives. If a horse can't walk around and run around, hold on a minute, I'm gonna grab some coffee. If a horse can't move, then a horse is almost just as good as dead. They're not like humans that can go sit on the couch or that can lay in bed and rest their legs because they have a sore leg. Um, if they can't move, they don't stay alive in the wild. And so that is true for them. They're on their feet almost all the time. Um, and the only way they have like gotten horses to improve really is to contain them in a stall. If it's not too bad, they just can't move around a lot. But if it's really, really bad and they can't put any weight on it, they'll act, they actually make these slings where hold the horses up in the air. And there's been horses that have had to be, be in a sling for like a couple months. And can you imagine what torture that would be for a human, but even more for a horse that is supposed to be moving all the time up to 40 miles a day in the wild. So, I mean, just 
it's really hard for them. So it's very important to keep their hooves healthy because if a horse doesn't have healthy hooves and they start going lame, your horse may not last. They're not built to just lay down and you can't tell them, hey, rest your leg for a while. You know, that's dangerous. That's basically telling them to lay down and die. They need to be able to escape from danger. So it's very important to keep their hooves picked out and to check their hooves because if they get rocks, I've, I've found screws and nails and rocks in my horse's hoof and chunks of wood that get trapped in their hoof. And so, um, you know what I'll do, you guys? I'm going to take a picture of Zell's hooves at some point, and I'll put it on my um, Facebook page, Freedom for the Taking. You can check it out since you're not going to be able to see it in the video very well. Right now, her she's not facing the right direction. The camera's too far away. But... You can see that they have this frog in the middle of their hoof and it's the frog is sensitive they can feel and they can feel in the areas around that but like the very edges of their what are you doing Zell's trying to take my phone out of my pocket you guys silly girl um she's reaching right around while I'm picking out her hoof trying to pull my phone out of my back pocket anyways this area in the middle of their hoofs called the frog and that's very sensitive to it's very it's a sensitive area it's not so sensitive they can't walk on it because obviously they do they run on it but um that and the area around it is whoa, whoa, whoa. hey 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 what's the matter is Dale bothering you she's swishing her tail Dale sometimes her feet aren't in the right position and so if she's not balanced and you go to try to pick up why don't you move move that foot there we go she was too stretched out so when i went to pick up this other foot it wasn't comfortable for her so that's another thing you have to make sure the horse is ready to balance on three legs before you ask for their foot anyways um if stuff gets jammed in there they can, it can work its way up into the horse's part of the hoof and they can get super infected and go lame the area right around the edge of the hoof is called the hoof wall that's the area where the people um farriers put nails into and that's how they can shoe and uh, shoe a horse and put nails into their hoof because that area of the hoof doesn't have feeling it's like your it's like your uh, fingernail or your toenail once it gets long you clip it off right so um when you're shoeing a horse you leave that a little long so you can put nails into that without hurting the horse but if you put them too far just like if you clip your fingernails too short this starts hurting right so um, we, I try to check my horse's hooves and make sure there's not stuff stuck in them and keep them cleaned out so they don't start growing bacteria and stuff like that in them because it, tra you know, it traps, it can easily trap a bunch of mud and nasty hazardous things in there. So we finished that and let's see, let's see what time it is because what's wrong, Zell? Oh, something scared her a little bit. Oh, the cat came over here. So I've got this tarp over out here on the ground. I was thinking about using that with Zell today. And the cat came over and jumped on the tarp and it kind of alarmed her for the second. All right, here's the other thing. One reason, another reason why I wasn't gonna really train her today was because I'm sure her eyesight's a little bit impaired with her left eye being swollen somewhat. So I just remembered my liquid tears that I brought. I'm gonna try to put some of this in Zell's eye. And we'll see how she does with this. Come here, sweet girl. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to let her smell this. I'm just going to put a little bit. It's just drops. So it's just drops. And I've never put something in her eyes. So like Shiloh was used to it and she knew, kind of knew the routine. Young horses. It's There's a lot of things that are new experiences. So right, let's see if we can just get a little bit in here without her feeling too uh, concerned about it be really soft in her eye. I know, I know your eye's itchy. Hold on. She's trying to itch your eye on me. I'm sure it's itchy with it being swollen. Hold on. Hold her head still. If we can get her to hold it still for just a minute, I can put some drops in. There we go. Got a little bit in. It's hard with the patient that moves her head all around. <laughs> there she is. There she is. Hold on a minute. I know there's cats and dogs everywhere. Everything's distracting you right now. Let me see if I can get a little bit more. Here we go. That was a good one. There, we got some liquid in her eye. That's better. Yeah, that just might help soothe it a little bit. Hmm? There we go. Everybody loves you, Zell. They don't want your eye to be hurting. All right. 
I'm going to do just one other thing here while you guys are with me. I'm going to put this liquid eye stuff in her grooming box here. I brought my um, mounting block over here because I thought, how can I utilize this time with my horse um, and maybe still work on some things without asking her to do a lot that's going to um, require her vision. So I had this idea. I've just been spending time. So when I got Zell, I think I've told everybody that she had the 30-day training. You could, They could ride her. They could crack, crack a whip off her, walk, trot, can her, take her through obstacles. They would bring her up to this mounting block, and she would rush up and almost get over top of the mounting block really, really fast. And that was supposed to be really impressive. Like, look how helpful, like, like we've trained her to help you get on, get on. And a lot of people have trouble here. So I'm going to have you back up just a minute so that we have a good view for the camera. A lot of people have trouble, like when they bring the mounting block out, the horses know what's up. And so they do everything but come beside the mounting block. And so it's really frustrating for people. So of course, as a selling point, they trained Zell to really rush up fast to the mounting block. But the problem was she was terrified the whole time. Like she had fear in her eyes. She did it because she didn't want to be in trouble. So I've been trying to rewire that part of her brain in a way that doesn't feel scary for her. So I've been doing different things. Like I'll just come to the mounting block and scratch her, or I'll climb up on the corral and have her come over close to me and I'll just give her a really good scratch. So. I'm not going to ask her to do a lot while she's here. I'm just going to see how she walked up. She's like, oh yeah, this is a good spot because mom scratches me. And look, you guys, I just groomed her and I'm still getting tons of more hair off. It's just almost impossible at this time of year. I don't know if I'm out of the video camera view at this point. My head might be out, but oh well. You can see Zell at least. So this is something small that's not, it doesn't look like it's seemingly doing very much, but what it's doing is it's telling Zell that this mounting block does not have to be something you're scared of. It doesn't have to be a demand or a command. It can be a partnership. Sometimes I might ask you to come up to it so I can scratch you. Now she's moving around a little bit, but that's okay. I'm not going to um, trap her feet. I'm not going to confine her and say you can't move. But I will just say, just, you know, stick close to me. So I try to work both sides of my horses. Get them comfortable with the left side and the right side. So we're going to back her up a step here, a couple steps. I'm going to see if she'll come over here for a rub. See, I put my arm out and she goes, oh, wait, this is good. See, she did that all herself. If you're watching the video, she walked over here all on her own. And now I'm going to give her a good itching. Say, good job, Zell. You're a gem. Look at her. She loves that. So this is also getting her comfortable with the human being over top of her. So I've ridden her just a few times and she felt so unsafe because she was basically just terrified the whole time. And there was not a, an understanding. It was a very huge gap in the understanding. So it's like she had these movements and these things she knew she was supposed to do, but she didn't know why. She didn't have the understanding for it. What's the matter? Oh. Now she's pawing because she says, I'm bored. This is getting boring, Mom. So here's the thing with young horses and little kids. Their, their attention span is very short. So I can only do this for so long before she's like, okay, that was good itching. I'm going to see if she'll come over on the other side one more time. So I'm going to ask her to turn this way. Here we are. Can ask her to come back over here. Face the camera and see if she'll come next to the mounting block and get a scratch on this side. That's good. So sometimes we do a little scratches and then every once in a while, I'll just get crazy and say, pat all over her. Like, oh, can you, lots of padding for desensitizing. Boop, 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 boop. Lots of padding, yeah. And then I'll say, what do you, how do you feel about a leg? What if a leg was over here? What if mom was leaning over you? This is all preparation, preparation for riding. If you prepare, it's a lot, whole lot safer. I have been on enough scary horses and been doing horsemanship long enough that I don't really care to do it the fast, unsafe way anymore. 
Yes, you can get things done faster, but it's not as safe. Sometimes I'll throw a leg over though. There we go. She's coming around and sniff like, what's your leg doing over there? What's your leg? But see, she's not alarmed. She's not freaked out. Look at her head. She dropped it down to the ground. She's like, whatever. Sometimes mom puts her leg on me. Then she pats me and then sometimes she slides up on top of me. She said, I don't know that I was ready for that. <laughs> I'll just kind of slide up here. Pretend like she's grandma's horse. <sighs> I don't want her to be afraid of me and I'm getting her used to me all around her and getting her used to the fact that this mounting block is a good thing. Come over it, get some good scratches. Mom might slide her leg over and sit on you for a second. But then while I'm up here, I'm gonna move all around and rub her. So I just kind of continue what I was doing. I'm just doing it from on top of her now. Dee dee dee, there we go. It does take a, a certain amount of, sorry, my headphones is catching on my jacket. It takes a certain amount of risk and judgment to uh, train horses. You have to have good judgment and be able to take a few risks, you know. It's not ever a guaranteed safe thing. It is one of the most dangerous sports you can do. But she's like, let's go for a ride. I said, nah, I'm coming back off now. I don't have my helmet on. And she's not really, even though she would walk off fine with me, she's not going to buck me off. She's not mentally prepared to move together with me. And that's the things I want to work on with her. And that's the things that I have restarted with her because she had such a terrible start. Oops, sorry. Just put the, move the mounting block out of the way. That I want to make sure that we got a good foundation going. So we take it slow, even though I could go faster. All right, we'll end with one last thing here. I have brought my flag out today. This is an excellent training tool if it's used correctly. Um, and I've Zell seen it before. Uh, and they actually used a flag with her there too, but there we go, look at her. She likes to bite it. Now she's chewing on the flag. Perfect. Sometimes I'll just let her there we go. And that's kind of the way she makes sure it's not going to bite her back. <laughs> Can I bite you and you not bite me back? There's a big old semi-load le le leaving with a bunch of cows on it. So baby cows must be taking them to a different pasture. We have a bunch of cows. Um, a big cattle farm that's um, borders our pasture. It's real pretty though. Anyway, so this flag is a tool and I don't want my horses to ever be afraid of any of my tools. So before I ever use this to uh, maybe guide and direct her, I first make sure that she's not afraid of it. So I never use my tools to beat my horse or to hurt my horse in any way. I, my goal is never to cause them pain. I will sometimes cause them to be uncomfortable, but there's a huge difference besides uncomfort and pain. Right? So, um, you know, I might put some pressure on that she wants to move away, but it's not pain at all. So I get to, I can rub her all over with this flag. Right now I'm shaking the flag beside her. You'll hear that noise in the podcast. And, uh, she's totally standing still. So the test is if my horse stands still and looks relaxed. It's not just if they stand still, because sometimes they can stand still and look terrified and be frozen in fear. So she has to be able to stand still and be relaxed. So she's, her, her body language is very relaxed right now. Okay. So that's the thing. You have to pay attention to all of the different signals that the horses are giving you. And maybe it's something we can think about in our relationships with humans too. Um, noticing each other's body language. You know, just because if I'm lecturing my kids, they're sitting quietly listening to them, uh, not listening to them, listening to me, doesn't mean they're listening. They could be just shut down. They could have, they could kind of be disassociated. Horses will do that too. They will shut down and kind of disassociate. That's what Sky does to a certain degree. She kind of tries to get out of her body and you can see it in her eyes. And I'll continue to work with her really slowly. And then it's neat because you'll watch her brain come online. 
And then she's like, oh. And then she starts licking and chewing and blinking. And then her face lowers. And it's almost like you can literally watch her come back into her body and realize, oh, I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be guarded. I don't have to escape this situation. It's not a bad situation. And you're not a bad person. Um, how many times have you zoned out while somebody was talking to you? Because it just wasn't anything meaningful or it was annoying or you were scared. Horses do the same thing. So she's cool with this flag. Wave it all around her. She doesn't feel threatened and she doesn't look scared. They did this with her. They did this flag exercise when I was there, but her head was, her body language is completely different. Her head was way up in the sky and her eyes were big as cannonballs. She looked terrified, but she wasn't moving her feet. So I think they, most people can be tricked by like, oh, look, that horse is completely relaxed and not bothered. But she was more just like, oh God, I'm terrified, but I'm just going to stand here because I know that's what they want me to do. All right, Zell, let's, let's say goodbye to everybody. I'm going to have her come forward a little bit. Yeah, we don't want to do too much because she's just not feeling so well with her swollen eye today. But she got a really nice grooming. Yeah, and really good scratching. Um, huh, I was trying to think of what our takeaway could be for this week. Um, I think for me, I'll just, I'll, I'll share kind of just what I'm working on is trying to focus on one thing at a time. I'm really overwhelmed with the big picture of my business and all the possibilities and all the opportunities, but then how to make it all work and how to get everything I need and how to do things that I've never done before, like finding grants and um, talking to all these different organizations, trying to figure out how we can collaborate together. And it feels so overwhelming and so scary. And I was talking with Jennifer about it the other day and I was like, I just, it feels like so much and it just feels like too much sometimes it can easily feel like too much and so it's like trying to just take it one day at a time for me do the things I know to do and trust that the universe will bring in the opportunities as I can handle them and as the needs arise the answers will come um, that is something I believe that nature really teaches me that I see happen again and again that as the needs arise, the answers come. And something I've been noticing walking out, I take Deo, my dog, on a walk twice a day in our field. Um, and I love it. It's my time in nature. And even though it's the same trail every time, I see new things and notice new nature if I'm paying attention. I've also walked the trail a hundred times and not paid attention and been all in my brain and all frustrated and trying to work out all these things in my, all this stress in my mind. And, and what happens is I get to the end of the walk and I really don't feel any better. Um, and I'm not really connected to myself and I didn't see anything cool. But if I force myself to be in the present moment, just like I was talking about being with the horse when I groomed them, I notice things in nature. So yesterday I was walking up by our second pond and there's these trees growing right there on the edge of the pond. There's just a couple, a couple of them. And I'm looking around and all of a sudden I stop because I thought I see something moving the grass. And it looks like the head of a turtle sticking up. And then I realize, no, that's not a turtle. That's a bird. There's this type of bird that sits in the tall grass and it specifically chooses tall grass to sit in because that's its camouflage. When predators come near, it stays really still and it stre stretches his neck up to the sky, extends it as far and as long as it can, and it points its beak straight up at the sky and it's stock still. It freezes and it looks like the grass. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Ah, uh, dang it. I can't think of the name of it. My kids know the name of it. I showed them the video and on the video, it's so cool. You can see, you, you don't know what you're looking at. You can't even find the bird. And then all of a sudden it flies. I move just a little bit and it flies. And you're like, oh my gosh, where'd that bird come from? And they're big. They're, I'm not talking small. I mean, it's like a, I don't know, a foot 
maybe a little bit longer, maybe 14 inches. It's a, a decent sized bird. Um, so I, and what I'll do, here's what I'll do. I'll put that video on my Freedom for the Taking. You need to find it. You need to watch it. It's crazy. It'll blow your mind. Um, but my takeaway is that nature's always there. We just have to look for it. And we won't see it. We'll miss it. We'll walk right by it if we're not paying attention. So after I walked by that pond, I was coming back and we have a second pond up front. I was passing that pond. I thought, I know it should be snake season. I've, I saw one, one snake last week and I thought, I'm going to look again. And so I spent some time looking by the pond because they camouflage so well. Zelda's over here yawning. Jeez, a sleepy baby. And I can't see the snakes. I don't see any snakes. I stand there for a while. I walk up and down the edges. And I was like, well, I have to head back to the house now. Um, they might, maybe they're just in their holes. But I thought, I'm just going to go around this one edge of it and look over here on the side. I don't usually look on. So I walk around just looking. And you have to just stare. You literally just have to stare in places where it looks like there's nothing. And sure enough, I'm just staring. And then I see it. Pops out. The snake camouflage. It's just laying right there, curled up. It's big water snake right there on the edge of the water but it blended in and it just was this confirmation it's there I just have to look for it and that is what I'm reminding myself and that is what nature's reminding me to remind myself is that the answers are there I just have to look for them I have to be willing to do the hard thing of looking for them Right? They're not going to, just like freedom for the taking, freedom doesn't show up and knock on our door and say, hi, I'm here to make your life wonderful. We have to take our freedom. We have to look for it and we have to take it and claim it. And I'm learning the same thing. This, you know, starting this organization is so hard because I have to go out and look for the answers and continue searching even when I can't see anything it doesn't look like there's anything there not give up to keep going with whatever I know to do finding whatever um, routes I can take and trying this and trying this and trying that and believing the answers are there that they will appear when they're supposed to if I'm diligent to keep looking so <sighs> that's what I'm that's what I'm going to do this week um, I'm just going to trust. I'm going to trust. It's like this, ah, I hate trusting in things that feel out of my control, but I, I have some of that control. And, and the part that's mine to own is that I'm diligent and responsible and persistent and that I don't give up and that I don't quit, but I keep showing up and I keep believing that this is my thing. It matters. It will come to happen and the answers are there and I will find them. Right, so, yeah. So if you're, if you're in a, a area of your life that maybe feels like crossroads, or it's just difficult, it's just crappy and shitty right now. I want to encourage you. The answers are there. You just have to keep looking. I promise you. I promise you. You got this. We got this. Right. This, this humaning, this humaning on a planet, being a human, it's hard stuff. It's like shit, legit hard. It's not for the weak of heart and feeble of bones. <laughs> okay, now I'm just entertaining myself. I'm going to let you guys go. Zella's ready to go back to the crown, take her second or third nap for the day. She's do itchy. So come on over here. Sorry, we ran into the microphone there. Come to the camera and say bye to everybody. You can see her eye maybe. So baby, you see her eye? This is her swollen eye on the left. You can tell the difference between this one and her right eye over here. That's the normal size over here. And this is the, can you see it? This is her swollen one. Anyways, she's going to get better. I'll give her some more eye drops tonight if she needs them. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. Thanks for coming to Grooms Out with me. I know it was a longer session than normal. Um, oh, look at that. A blue heron just flew across our pasture really low. I love that. Sounds like the crows chased it off. Can you hear the crows? Yeah. Here come the crows. This whole band of crows chased off the blue, her a blue heron. 
Do you, I almost said Blue Herman. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Do you know what a group of crows are called? A murder. Go figure. And they're not murdering anything. I don't know why people said that. I think people hate crows because they're annoying. Um, but actually, they're super smart. If you know anything about crows, I, I, I researched them recently. They're really smart. So I think maybe when mankind finds something that they feel threatening to their, you know, species of this animal can't be smarter than me, they give it names like, we'll call their group a murder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why we have to feel threatened. I think that we can just be amazed. So, Zell's over here like, what are those crows making such a racket about? I do wonder sometimes. I know I'm rambling. This is my last thing. I wonder if, and I imagine they can. It, it, it would make sense that each animal would be able to understand what the other species is saying. You know, they say that birds will warn other animals if there's a predator in the area and like deer and other animals will pick up on those warning signals. So I know they, I know they can tell warning and all that, but I wonder if like, can they understand the actual language the birds are speaking? I don't know. Food for thought. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. I love you so much. Have a great week. Um, hope you get to enjoy some sunshine and I'll keep you up to date how things are going with freedom for the taking we're gonna go set up our booth today I wish Zell could come with me and that's my goal is to take Zell someday but I need someone to donate like ten thousand dollars I don't know maybe less maybe five thousand I want to get a portable corral that I can take with me so she can come and be in a corral right Zell that is one of our long long-term goals so we'll get it someday Mwah. have a great week I love you all don't forget the answers are there just keep looking. See you next week.